got the subpoena. Am I being sued? Am I gonna get arrested? This whole thing has been a great lesson for a small business owner like me. Let's get after it. So first time since the inception of this channel, I'm going back and I'm actually remaking a video. I actually made this yesterday, shot it all yesterday, edited it all, got it all ready to upload. And I watched it one last time and I realized I was going back on a promise I made myself, which was to never unwittingly put somebody onto the internet unless I had their consent. You know, if, if I'm shooting at like a truck stop or an Amazon yard or something like that and somebody walks into a shot, that's fine, I'll reshoot it or I'll come up with a creative way to edit them out. But uh, I kind of think back on my time that I spent as an employee. You know, if somebody had showed up to the pharmacy counter with a camera and stuck it in my face and was like, I'm going to put you on social media or this kind of stuff, I wouldn't really like that very much. But you know, I won't do it when I'm working, but the whole thing that made me almost willing to go back on this promise to myself was trucking related work ended up showing up on my front doorstep at home. What's happening? So original intention with the video. Um, yeah, originally, I had uh, shot this. I walked out, legally obtained video. I'm, you know, the uh, process server at my front door. I, first thing I do, I walk out, I set the GoPro down on the ledge, and I'm like, hey, I'm recording it. Uh, you're recording me? I am. I'm recording both of us. And, you know, he acknowledges the camera. So, I mean, as far as, like, could I legally show the video, I could. It just kind of goes It kind of goes against what I stand for as far as, you know, making these videos, that type of stuff like that. Um, and I don't want to make it seem like I'm angry or any animosity towards this process server. I know he's just doing his job. But to understand how I got into that mindset, we'd have to go back two months ago to when I first met this gentleman. Uh, knock at the door. This was two months ago. Wife answers the door comes and gets me downstairs and is like, there's somebody at the front door looking for somebody from Stat Trucking. And great, go up there, uh, got a subpoena. And he's like, I've got a subpoena for Stat Trucking. I'm like, that's me. And uh, he gives it to me and everything. And then before we leave, he's like, oh, can I get your name? I'm like, yeah, it's Todd. He goes, can I get your last name? Sure, Alan. Can I get your phone number? Absolutely. I mean, I'm just, you know, tr polite, helpful, whatever you want to say. I'm just trying to be that for him in that moment. And uh he leaves, I go inside, first business related subpoena I've ever ever received, uh, you know, owning a company and I start digging through it and I start going through it, it's about 7 to 10 pages and I realize it's been sent to me in error it was intended for a company called Stat Trucking Inc. Now I am Stat Trucking LLC, so I know somebody's made a mistake, so I get on the call or I get on the phone, I call up the process server people up at the court and I'm like, hey, you know I've received this, this isn't my company it was sent to my address that, you know, names of some similar likeness, that type of stuff like that, but I shouldn't be in possession of this. What what do I do? And they're like, oh, just, you know, send in the last page of the subpoena. It's, you know, something that you check a little box that says there are no records. I send that in. I think everything's going to be fine. Fast forward to current day. So what I've been working on behind the scenes here for like the last two months since receiving that first subpoena is, you know, cleared up everything with the court. They knew that it was the wrong thing. Well, here's the thing is, you know, the, the court's not, it's not like there's one person to talk to. There's multiple departments. The same department that doesn't cross their T's and dot their I's and didn't realize that like, hey, Stat Trucking LLC and Stat Trucking Inc. aren't the same thing. Those are the same people who now receive my information, my first name, last name, telephone number from this process server who was there the first time. These people have been relentless. They've been, you know, uh, calling, uh, got a hold of my email, emailing, saying like, you know, you, you, you need to come to court. And it's like, this isn't my case. This is a different thing. And they're like, well, you know, and the veiled threats, you know, like, well, we're going to take action against Stat Trucking Inc. And it's like, I don't care what you do to Stat Trucking Inc. It's not me. You, you have the wrong person. The, 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 the this whole thing stems from there's an, there's an ex-employee, I assume ex-employee of Stat Trucking Inc. that worked for Stat Trucking Inc. like five years ago and is trying to take some sort of like legal action against them today. I'm like, look, my, my company wasn't even in business. I didn't start this until like, I think it was like 2020, somewhere in there. I mean, they're, they're looking for dates in like 2017, 2015, that kind of stuff. And it's like, do whatever you want to Stat Truck and Inc. It's not me. You have my information because I gave it to the guy who dropped off the subpoena the first time. And so it, it's been kind of going back and forth. So I wanted to kind of get, you know, more information as far as like, you know, what are my legal, you know, if this, if, if this escalates, if another subpoena arrives, that type of stuff, I kind of wanted to get some sort of like legal reference as far as what are my requirements what are my rights when a uh when a process server is at the door you know as far as 
and, and this may vary state to state. If you're a small business owner, owner operator, I'd highly recommend either, you know, checking with an attorney or at least at a minimum Googling this and finding out like, what am I legally required to provide to a process server? Because the, the error of my ways came out of me wanting to be compliant with him the first time, giving him my name, giving him my phone number. That, that's, that's how these people got in touch with me. That's how they falsely think that I'm somehow related to or in business with Stat Trucking Inc., which just isn't the case. And so what I found out is when they're, you, you technically, and this, this again, this may vary state to state, but you, when a process server is dropping off a subpoena, like I'm willing to accept a subpoena for Todd Allen. You technically can never refuse a subpoena, but you know, if, they, if they're dropping off a subpoena for Todd Allen, that's fine. I will accept it as Todd Allen. If they're dropping off a subpoena for Stat Trucking LLC specifically, I will take that and I will identify myself only as the owner of Stat Trucking LLC. As far as my name, my phone number, they're not entitled to it. You don't need to provide it. So the video I intended to show was, you know, the guy showing up at my house, me being kind of like, no, no nonsense this time. I, you know, I set the camera down. I say, look, I'm recording this. He acknowledges the camera. You know, we kind of go through our stuff of, you know, he, he's got a subpoena. He's got a subpoena for Stat Trucking Inc. I'm like, well, I'm, I will only accept, I, I will take any subpoena for Stat Trucking LLC. Other, otherwise, you've got the wrong person. And so... He ends up, you know, acknowledging on the video that it is in fact for Stat Trucking Inc., that it's not for Stat Trucking LLC, and I don't refuse the subpoena, but he ends up leaving with it. And I was glad to get all that on, on video because, you know, uh, when, when you know, through some of these veiled threats through people from the court of saying, like, you know, if you don't show up to court, you're, you know, uh, one of the things that's been mentioned is incarceration. That's not, that's not a threat I take lightly. And so if, you know, it, like, it, what caused me, I'm not the type of person to go stick a camera in somebody's face and be like, oh, I'm recording this, I'm doing that. But when when, when we get to this level of stuff, I guess I, I, I will go to extraordinary lengths to be sure that my rights remain intact. So anyway, it, it worked out beautifully. I, I was going to show that video and it was just one of those things, but it's like it kind of after watching it, it kind of made it seem like all this animosity I have towards the court system and them sending this to the wrong company in the first place was directed at this guy and that's not how I wanted it to come across it's I was actually I mean I was cordial with this guy we ended up both you know in the video we both at the end of it we're like okay have a nice day happy new year you know it's like we we, we left on decent terms I'm just gonna sit in the back and say that you're not the person perfect yeah right on all right man thank have you all right happy new year you too but uh yeah, I just, I'm not messing around with the courts as far as, you know, people not being accountable and sending this willy-nilly to any company they want to and then having those ramifications, having me sitting here holding it with it. I would strongly encourage you, if you're, you know, small business owner, owner-operator, I'm not special. The fact that this happened to me tells me that it could happen to you, and that's kind of why I make this video. You, you definitely don't go into that first encounter with somebody dropping off a subpoena at your house with no knowledge. At least know, like, what are my legal rights? What am I absolutely legally required to tell this person if they're ever at my door? And, you know, you go into that situation armed with better information than I was the first time. I hope this video serves you well. Appreciate you for watching. Take care.